What kind of, you know, since Zufa bought uh, Strike Force, the, the, the women's fights have been, in, you know, there was a good one last week, two weeks or a month ago, it was okay with Jermaine uh, Darren Dami. Uh, do you feel pressure that you need to, uh, when you fight, like prove to them that you guys do belong in the co main event and, and fighting with well, the big boys? Um, what I see is that um, Zufa is a non profit organization. I mean, they have to make money, so there has to be a reason why they keep us here in the, in the Zufa family. And if we can outdraw the men again, like it is in my last fight, I think we've got a good um, um, example of that we are legit to be here. Uh, what I see is that we can draw a, lot, a big uh, audience because um, uh, a lot of guys are watching now MMA, but if we can draw in the women as well, and the women see like, hey, they're normal girls, they, and they kick ass, I can do that too. I think we can double, up, double the audience, and if we can do that, we make more money, and they keep us around and they did put us on the co-main event. I mean, they could have put us in the challenges show and, you know, on a non-televised car, but they choose to not to do that. And by making that decision, that gives me a lot of confidence. Now we have given that chance. We have to prove it that we're legit to be here. And well, I see that well till at least December, we've got the time. Why do you think um, MMA, women's MMA, is even in the way the media covers it compared to women's boxing, why do you feel as though it's more accepted and, and more popular within <coughs> you know, the sports circles? Could you please? Uh, uh, you know, in, in, at least in North America, yeah. women's boxing is not covered um, at all or rarely by the boxing media. They, they don't cover it. Maybe that's because of the, the lack of stars. But within MMA media, w I think most of the people here, we cover women's MMA yeah. like it's Oh, you do a good job, so, <laughs> everyone. You. So thank why do you, you think that is? Why do you think it's more accepted uh, within its sport as opposed to boxing within its sport with the women? Well, to be honest, uh, well, if I think about that, it will be uh, because I do not know too much about American boxing. Uh, so I have to compare it to with my home country. And uh, what I see is that all the, the females who are fighting in, in the sport are also like, uh, they present themselves of, as normal girls. And if we can relate, if women and people can relate to us, like we're, we're human beings or uh, students or, or mom or wife, then um, we're more uh, acceptable. And um, maybe that's the reason why. But can I come up with a better answer right now? <laughs> you make me think about it. <laughs> Do you feel any pressure to be a bit of a spokesman for, or, or spokeswoman for female MMA? I mean, a lot of the guys don't have to go out and try to convince people that men can do this. No, but uh, it doesn't feel like a pressure. It's something that I really want to do because um, I really feel it's important that women start uh, developing themselves physically. And I think MMA is the best uh, option to do that. If men attack you, you all, if there's like an evil man and he wants to attack you, you uh, women will most of the times end up on the ground and you need to learn how to defend yourself. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is very good for that, but if you're never in a situation that you get real pressure and real aggression on you, it's really hard to, to deal with the pressure once it happens in real life. And therefore, I think MMA is like the perfect sports and, and that's why I want to be there for the girls out there also for the generations after me. Do you feel that with Gina Carano out and Cyborg still on side, do you feel the winner of this fight then will be the face of women's MMA? Oh, well, first of all, I think um, um, Gina did do a hell of a job. She really made it grow, it grow here, so I will be, always be thankful to her and um, respect her a lot. Well, Cyborg, if you don't respect her, you're, <laughs> you're crazy, so I respect her a lot too. If I can be it, I, I hope. And I will be it, and I will do my best, and I will honor the game and all the women in it too. Obviously, Misha is very tough. You're focusing on this fight, but do you feel as though there are contenders in line? How do you? Oh, enough. There are. I think the division is uh, deep enough. Who do you think sure. is sort of next in line? If you well, look at the there, there are a lot of girls who, c because I was fighting in 145 and I dropped down, so I know there are a lot of girls can drop down to 135 or can come up. So uh, if, well, if I see the girls walking around, even in the 145 division, uh, it will be good. But I think that it, when I win this fight, I will fight Sarah first. <laughs> and a, lo a lot of girls, uh, Misha said it recently, that the 145 division is sort of like a super heavyweight division to compare it to men's MMA, that there aren't many girls who can really fight or are comfortable fighting at 145. Would you rather them get rid of 145 and maybe put in 125? Because it seems as though a lot of girls would rather fight at 125 than 
You know, that, that's a that's no, more natural way no, class for them. I, to me, I don't want to choose because what I want to do is to make this sport grow. And I think Misha does a hell of a job in with all the PR she's doing. And I think we women have to stick together and do more and more PR. And then it will grow and grow. And then we do not have to get rid of any divisions whatsoever. And more divisions we can have, maybe the 150 or even above.